Hi folks, welcome to the first episode of Coffee and Conversations with Student Life and Campus Community. Today in our first episode, we're excited to meet you online. We're going to be talking about student organizations and what they can do to keep their student members engaged during this coronavirus chaos. My name is Tirza Watts. I'm the Director of Student Life and Campus Community. And joining me today is Courtney Kristen, our Coordinator for Student Organizations. Hi everyone. I hope your first day of remote learning or remote working is going well for you. I challenge you to think about something positive each day during this chaos and my positivity is this guy right here being able to enjoy time with him uh, while I'm also working. Awesome. You can't yeah. see my kitties but I have one of my cats on the table right next to me as well. It's been fun to hang out with them today. Right. It's a, the positivity of it all. Uh, so we're going to, like Tirza said, we're going to talk about what student organizations can do during this time. And I'm going to kick us off with a question to Tirza about what can our organizations do during this new reality? So first off, you can still meet, just have virtual online meetings. We had a staff meeting this morning at 830 through Zoom, which is what we're recording this video through. Um, you can also use Google Hangout. If you guys all have iPhones, you could use FaceTime, um, whatever product works for you. Um, but you can still accomplish some of your goals through the online medium. Um, if you are a group that plans events on a regular basis and now you don't have events to plan because campus is closed, um, why not shift to being a discussion group and talk about topics related to your club's theme or even do a question of the week. Just find a fun way to stay connected. Um, we also want you to uh, think about holding discussions about specific topics such as how do we help students feel like they belong on campus? That's something the student life team feels very passionately about. We want students to feel like CU Denver is their home. So maybe have a conversation about how you contribute to that. Another question you could ask is how do we want to recruit members for next year? So start talking about the Convocation Barbecue Student Organization Fair that takes class the Friday before classes start in August. Um, and also talk about Fall Fest. How can we use that to recruit new members? Um, I also want you to think about discussing how can we orient students to our group and let them get to know people in our group. Sometimes a student joins but they never really make friends because the club hasn't taken the time to actually do some discussion and icebreakers and like introduce yourself and maybe it's a question of the week every week and people have to share about themselves and eventually they learn enough about each other um, to really be connected outside of that club experience. Another thing you can do is have your officers revisit your constitution and your bylaws um, and make changes that need to be made to better achieve your mission or your goals and then have your, your members vote on that. Um, you can also talk about how you do elections. I know when we met with a bunch of student organization leaders recently, I was very surprised that very few groups do formal elections. Mm -hmm. um, it is a best practice to do that. So we want you to think about how are we going to select our leaders. You don't necessarily have to have people run for office in the way maybe student government does it. Um, but come up with some kind of process to select your leaders to allow students to indicate, hey, I'm interested. Um, and then to share what they would want to accomplish in the role they're interested in and then come up with a process of how you're going to do that. And then we want you to write that down somewhere and share that with your advisor or whoever keeps your records for your student organization. Um, the next thing you can do is do elections or do your officer selections. Um, as we wind down the spring semester, it's going to be important that you choose the people who Courtney, as an example in our team, can get in touch with um, this summer so that she can tell them about the registration process for things like that convocation, um, barbecue, organization fair. Um, next thing I want you to think about is how do we raise money? I know that some student organizations do that through dues, but others do ongoing fundraisers. Um, and so I'm gonna turn the tables and ask Courtney a question. So yeah. tell us a little bit about how you think that um, student organizations can fundraise. Yeah, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that you've all heard of GoFundMe, uh, ranging from a band trying to raise enough funds for them to start an album, or if someone's grandmother is not able to have all the money for a surgery or something along those lines. So GoFundMe is that crowdfunding campaign, and awesome is CP Denver has their own crowdfunding resource. Uh, so that's Milo's Crowd. If you go to ucdenver.edu slash Milo's Crowd, uh, then you will be able to find that resource and contact information there. Something important to note is that you do need to give like at least three weeks in advance time uh, to work with 
uh, advancement is there who runs Milo's crowd. Uh, so you want to work with them to make sure you have a timeline because uh, it takes up to two weeks for them to approve uh, the crowdfunding campaign. Uh, but a crowdfunding campaign is something that you all can utilize to help offset your dues. Or if you want to uh, raise $500 to go towards a charity that makes sense for the mission of your organization or whatever you're looking for uh, that maybe you're not able to utilize this time. Uh, for example, those, those events uh, that we can't necessarily do on campus this time that you used to use to raise money, now we can use this crowdfunding campaign. Feel free to email me to talk about some more tips or tricks, but again, you can go to ucdenver.edu forward slash Milo's Crowd. Awesome. So last thing to answer your original question about what clubs can do to stay engaged right now is just do an online social event. Um, I've talked to friends who have um, different groups that they're watching TV shows together. Um, do your bachelor show online um, if that's not over already. Uh, watch it's something over. on Netflix. To, oh, it's over. Poo. Um, watch something on Netflix together or Amazon Prime. Um, but just get together online and have fun together. Those social pieces are going to be really important. Definitely. And especially, again, during this chaotic time, it's important for us to connect back in with each other. Amidst the chaos, there are still things that need to be done, and that would be re-registering your organization. Yeah. So, Tirza, can you share with us when our organizations are going to be required to re-register for the 2020-2021 year? Sure. So as we mentioned during the transition training program that we had for student organizations on February 24th, 1st, um, we're reorganizing how students function and receive recognition on campus. So we hope to have that information finalized by the middle of April. Because of the campus closure, we've decided to push back our re-registration process. Um, and so we're actually going to do that um, April 20th through May 15th. So you have a month between now and that point in time. And then you have a month to complete a process that won't take you long once you get logged on online. So let me ask you, Courtney, what do students actually need to do to re-register their student org? Thanks for that question. Uh, so effective April 20th, when we open this re-registration time period, uh, in MyLinks, your organization, if you log in on the admin side, will be in transition. Uh, I know some of you org leaders have heard me say re-registration or transition and use that term interchangeably. Uh, this is why, because MyLinks calls that transition. So this form, you're pretty familiar with already. It's those three officers, those three contact for president, vice president, treasurer. Your advisor is going to need to approve that. So you're going to need to make sure you have an active involved advisor at that time. Uh, you will upload your constitution and bylaws. So again, another opportunity uh, for kind of plug for you all to re-look at your constitution and bylaws and make changes now before you need to upload that with, to us. Uh, you can also put your social media information, goals that you're going to have for your organization, uh, what your meeting frequency will look like, and then about your organization so that when students come to MyLinks and they want to know why you exist and, and kind of what they can get out of your organization, they find that in that about information. Something important to note, uh, if you don't have your new officers selected during this time period, uh, you can utilize that student org officer or advisor update form. So again, I know I've told a bunch of you this, but outside of that transition or re-registration time period, so for April 20th through Mar May 15th, if you are changing your officers, we need you to fill out that form so that you can, uh, we can give them manual, we can manually give them admin access to their MyLinks page. Uh, so remember that form is right under the resources tab and it's the student org officers or advisor update form. Awesome, thank you. So for our last question, let's change gears a little bit. I know last week as we were kind of wrapping things up on campus, I talked to a number of students that were really anxious about, you know, transitioning to online learning. They were worried about missing seeing their friends um, and also just about this is a scary health thing and we don't know if we're gonna be fine or if somebody we love won't be. So what do you think our student leaders can do to take care of the members of their student orgs? Thank you for that question. I think it's really important, especially as we're doing this self-isolation as social beings for us to come back together. Uh, so first things first, 
make sure you checking you're checking in with your org members if you haven't done so already shoot them a message and let them know that you're kind of re-envisioning what the semester will look like but that you still all want to connect especially uh, to continue what your organization can do during this time something that's really important though is that you will need to adjust your expectations of your members work ethic uh, again there's that increased anxiety kind of in this in this crazy time, but then there also might be people at home uh, with, because the schools are closed, there's kids running around or they're not in their typical environments where they get work done. Uh, so we may need to adjust our expectations, but we should continue to encourage that out of the box thinking for how we can connect and further the mission of our organizations. Because we're self-isolating, it's so important to organize those social interactions, even if it's just for five minutes, 10 minutes, half hour, however long it ends up being, those, those little in-person, digitally, uh, interactions can really bring us a light into our day. Uh, Tirza mentioned that we had our team Zoom meeting, and that was really important for us all to kind of connect and get back in the zone of, of what we're doing uh, as, as we're all kind of live in our worlds and remotely in our living rooms all over the place. Um, but, so again, that self-isolation time. I know it may be easy for us to self-quarantine and chill, um, and we may think that our members aren't looking for information from us because they've already got so much going on with this chaos, but we're social beings. It's important for us to kind of get together and show solidarity as humans during this time. Uh, so I really encourage you all to do that question of the week or uh, watch that Netflix show together or do an article discussion to get talking. And something else that will be happening during this time, like we've mentioned, is that increased anxiety. Uh, so I just want to share a few tips and tricks and then uh, end with different resources on campus that you can utilize during this time. The first one being uh, practice tolerating uncertainty. So because we, we're kind of not sure what this virus is going to do and what the impact will be, we're certainly in uncertain times. But how we can practice getting comfortable with that is uh, we can go for a hike without checking the weather. Or we can, uh, instead of immediately Googling the, a, an answer to a question we have, we can kind of sit with that discomfort of not knowing the answer and sit with that uncertainty to kind of practice exercising that muscle of tolerance towards uncertainty. Something else that will be happening is accepting, that would be helpful, uh, is accepting your anxiety. So if we kind of distract or, or kind of run away from the anxious feelings that we're feeling, then we may be prolonging the amount and time that we are experiencing anxiety. I know we want to go to social media or to Netflix to kind of distract us from those feelings, but if we kind of just sit and let those feelings wash over us and absorb it in the moment and deal with it in the moment, then you're able to move on in a quicker amount of time. I do have an article that these these tips and tricks are coming from, and I'll put that in the comments of this post. Um, but something else that may happen is that this coronavirus, since it is a health issue, it may trigger feelings of and kind of nervousness around human mortality. But something that we can do is we can kind of take hold of, of what is important to us in life and take this opportunity to reflect what fills our bucket on our time on this earth uh, and kind of put our energy towards, towards those things and towards um, making any changes in our lives that need to happen to kind of elevate those things. And last but not least, if you or any of your members are truly having issues with their mental health and you think that you or your members need professional help, then please seek out those resources. You can check in with Tears or I or anyone in our office uh, to kind of navigate where to go for resources, but you can also utilize the counseling center, I know they're doing some online pieces, and then uh, the care team. The care team should be your first stop if you're reporting about someone else. So the care team, you can put in a report and they will reach out to that student and provide different resources and kind of just check in and depending on what the topic is, to give them uh, different resources to utilize on campus to get them through this difficult time. So again, it's really important for us all to check in with each other. Even though we're, we're in our own little worlds, uh, we're not that far away from, from the computer screen. So it's important for us to utilize those resources and check in with each other. Thank you so much. Those are great tips. 
Okay, folks, this ends our first episode. Um, we'll be posting these on a regular basis, and we hope you'll take time to watch. Um, speaking of that, we'd actually love to interview some student leaders about their experiences as student leaders. So you can nominate somebody by emailing um, studentorgs at ucdenver.edu. Um, Courtney manages that account and then she'll select some folks for us to get in touch with and she or I or one of our other staff members um, will do that interview. So have a great day. Remember to take a deep breath. Contact us if you have any urgent needs um, related to your student organization because we are happy to help you. All right. Bye folks. Thank you everyone. Have a good one.